Hello guys, I hope you're healthy and safe and you're learning pattern from these videos that I'm making. Guys, we have already covered for loops and I thought before we move forward from the topic of for loops, maybe I should teach you nested for loops. Now you might be thinking why nested for loops? Why are they important? What's the significance? So guys, um, first of all, nested loops will be required when you're learning or when you're working on a pattern matching or um, pattern creating application or a program. Also, just imagine that you're working on a project such as a library project. Now, in a library project, you might have a loop just to arrange books according to the subject. So maybe all history books together and then all science books together, all fiction books together. But then you might need another loop for any books that are going out of library. So that's why I think nested for loops are very helpful and it's something you should know. So guys, I'll take you in the computer now. And just before that, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do. And please like the videos if you're learning from them. And I'll take you to computer now. Thank you. We are inside the computer now. And I will just quickly pull up my Visual Studio code. I'll create a new file just gonna name it as we'll save it as nested for loop guys just to uh, make this very clear it's not that only for loops can go inside for loops. You can nest a for loop inside a while loop as well. You can also put a while loop inside a for loop as well. And obviously you can do two for loops as well. So it's not just limited to two for loops. Now I'll show you um, what I want to explain in this video is how they actually work. And in the next video, I'll create some patterns for you. However, in this video, it's very important that we understand how nested for loops actually work. So let's say I'll create two different variables. I'm just going to say for or instead of a, I'll just say n in range. And let's give this range 1 to 6. Then for i in range. Let's start this range from 10 to 15, or maybe 16. And then I'm just going to say print I'm going to use a F string and I'm just saying for value of n which is 
n the value of i is i. So guys, you might be wondering what I'm doing here. So first of all, I've created a for loop and I'm running this n inside this range of integers. Now when we use a range function, I've explained this in my previous videos that the upper bound is not included. So this loop should run from 1 to 5. And inside this loop, I'm using another loop. I've created another loop which will run from 10 to 15 because I'm using the range function again. And then I'm just printing using f strings what the values are. So guys, if you have any problems in understanding this particular video, I recommend you to watch the playlist that I've already created. Start from video one and just watch the videos in sequential order and you will learn everything about f strings you will know what range is how we use ranges with for loops and a lot of other things as well and we have created some small projects as well so i recommend you to watch the playlist if you are not following it and please practice and if you are new to this channel please subscribe as well so I'll show you, um, I'll run it and I'll show you what actually happens. So you can see here for the value of n which is 1, the value of i is 10. So which is pretty basic, it's the first value for both for loops. But then if you look at the second iteration it says for the n value of n which is 1 still so that hasn't changed the value of i is 11 and then third iteration is still 1 the value of n is still 1 and the value of i is now 12 fourth iteration the value of n is still 1 and then it's 13 which is the value of i and it goes until the value of i reaches 15. So the program executes in this fashion until the loop which is inside reaches to the highest range, highest bound in that range. And then the value of the outer loop changes. And then the same thing repeats again. So you can see The value of inner loop is changing, so the value of i is changing in each iteration. However, the value of n remains same, which is the outer loop, until the value of inner loop has completed the loop. So I hope this is something you have understood because, as I said, it is a very important concept, especially when you are making a pattern in Python. So guys, I'll be creating some patterns in the next video. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. But make sure you're practicing this. And I highly recommend that you practice this particular video or this particular tutorial on your computer as well so you get the basic understanding of how nested loops really work i will be meeting you in future videos keep watching stay safe stay healthy